Hello world, Cozzy here with another Geek Movie Review, this time for Thor The Dark World. Now for those of you who don't know, Thor The Dark World is the follow up to Thor, the Marvel Studios movie, and it is in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's part of this Phase 2, leading up to Avengers Age of Ultron. The movie picks up after the events of the Avengers in Asgard, and introduces uh, some new players into the Nine Realms, the Dark Elves, uh, Malekith, their leader, played by Christopher Eccleston, and gives a bit of background about them before talking about this, this massive weapon they have called the Aether, which was taken away by the Asgardians thousands of years ago, and Malekith's coming back with whoever's left of the Dark Elves to try and get this weapon, and finally destroy the universe, take it back to eternal darkness. Now this movie is absolutely fantastic. It is stunning visually, fantastic special effects. Uh, the acting is absolutely spot on. There's a fantastic score. There is very, very little wrong with this movie. It's definitely worth seeing ASAP. Now unlike the first movie, which took place mainly on Earth, this movie takes place mainly in Asgard. It is very much a sort of high fantasy movie where it's in the Asgard and other realms other than Earth. There is obviously a very important element of the story still on Earth. The majority of what you see in this film is actually in Asgard and in the other realms. And that allows it to, as I said, be more of a high fantasy. Uh, it feels very much like a, a sort of Lord of the Rings or a Game of Thrones type movie than the first one did. And it's fantastic because it really works, especially because the interplay between Thor and Loki is so good. The two actors, Hemsworth and Hiddleston, are so charismatic and work together so well that they basically would carry this movie even if it didn't already have a fantastic cast and a fantastic storyline. Speaking of the cast, there isn't a single bad performance in this movie. I mean, Idris Elba, brilliant. Hopkins, Brilliant. Eccleston, Stevenson, Jamie Alexander, fantastic. Zachary Levi replacing Joshua Dallas as Fandral. What amazing casting. The, the guy literally was like Errol Flynn. Like, the moment I saw him, I was like, is that actually the reincarnation of Errol Flynn? Fantastic actor, suits the role, hopefully he's signed on for, for the next movie because he's brilliant. And not to forget, Rene Russo is great in this movie. I mean, there is a part, and I'm not going to spoil it, where she is an absolute badass. Like, you will not believe it. You need to see it to believe it. The only minor issues I had is that sometimes, because there is a very good blend of humour and action and the sort of darkness, sometimes you're not sure in a scene which they're going for because they're trying to blend it too much. I mean, that, that's a very minor issue, but yeah, it does come across in one or two scenes. Uh, there is a very convenient plot point with Jane Foster early on in the movie that comes back later on, which was almost too convenient. And also the, the ether comes across more as a plot device than a plot line. Now, that might be what you were going for, and uh, a lot more could have been done with it, basically. But yeah, there's a potential to do more of it in the future. Now what you're all probably worrying about is the after the credit scene. Wait around for it. It's worth it. I know some people weren't very happy with the one from Iron Man 3, I personally liked it, but this, this is generally that <gasps> moment that you've got when you watch the after credit scene with the Avengers, and it's leading up to things that are going to probably spin out into, I would assume, Guardians of the Galaxy and possibly beyond. It is very, very important. If you're a comic book fan, if you're a big Marvel fan, stay, watch it, you'll get it, and then you can explain it to all of your friends that are with you. It's, uh, it's infinitely better than the scene in Iron Man 3. It's a real gem, you could say. This film is fantastic. It is definitely worth a watch once, maybe twice. Go and see it in 3D. It's worth the extra money for admission. Brilliant. As good as Iron Man 3. Possibly better than the first four. Four and a half stars. Okay guys, as always, thanks for watching. Down there's a like button, you click on that if you liked it. There's also in the description box below a link to my Twitter, my Facebook, my Tumblr. Follow me, follow this channel, see what's going on in the world of geek movies and the world of Great One Cozzy. There's a link there to my last geek movie review, you can pop out and watch that. And there's a link there to my last episode of The Big Question, where I talk about all of the geeky issues of the week. Until next time, au revoir.